Have you ever wondered if you are wearing the right foundation shade? I think anyone that wears foundation has asked that question. If you haven't, you probably should. <laughs> and I think people that choose not to wear foundation, one of the reasons why is because someone in their life is wearing the wrong shade. The solution is not as complicated as you might think. There are basically three questions that you have to ask yourself to determine your perfect match. And that is what we're going to talk about today. Hi, I'm Michelle Fox. If you're watching me on Facebook, you are probably on my business page, Michelle Fox Beauty. I sure would appreciate it if you would follow that. If you are on my blog, michellefoxonline.com, scroll to the very bottom of the blog when you're done watching the video and there is a box to check so you can subscribe to my weekly newsletter where you will get a freebie delivered to your inbox each and every week. And last but not least, if you're part of my YouTube family, I sure hope that you are subscribed to my channel, Michelle Fox Beauty. All right, so what are the three big questions? Well, first, you want to ask yourself, what is your undertone? You've probably heard that before, but we're going to dig deeper. The second question is, what is your shade category? There are three broad shade categories, just like there are three undertones. And finally, you want to find out what is the finish? What is the overall look that you want your foundation to have? So let's go to number one. First, what is your undertone? I have thought <laughs> I was every single undertone at different times of my life. I really have. So I can say it's an easy thing to figure out, but I get it if, if it's confusing to you. I always have gotten darker in the summer, so it's easy for me to think that I'm warm, but I am, I have a Greek background, so people would say that I must be olive. And I also have a certain favorite shade that I've used for years and years, which had a pink undertone, which that is cool. So back and forth and up and down and round and round. And a few years back, I finally diagnosed myself as neutral. And I thought, well, that explains it all because I can pretty much wear anything. So this is how you figure it out, or at least this is one of the simplest ways. How does your skin react to the sun? Assuming that you don't have sunscreen on, God forbid. Not that I'm, so I'm not advocating going out without sunscreen, but if you've ever done that before in the past, how typically would your skin react? So, for example, if when you are exposed to the sun, you burn for sure. If you don't have sunscreen, you're going to burn. You are likely a cool undertone. The darker complected you are, you aren't going to burn in the sun, but you would be unaffected by it. So, in order to uh, say you're cool undertone, that means that when you're in the sun, you for sure burn or it has no impact on you. You stay the same shade year round. Okay, so that's cool undertone. So ask yourself if that's you. Yes or no. The second one would be warm undertone. That means that when you're exposed to the sun, you get significantly darker easily, quickly. People have probably even commented like, oh my gosh, you know, you go on vacation with someone and you are several shades darker and they are exactly the same. And they're like, what the heck? Why did you get so much darker and nothing, you know, not, no change? Things are changing where a tan isn't, you know, as, as vogue as it used to be, but I think people still notice it. And that would mean that you have a warm undertone. People that tan very easily, people that their um their base shade deepens for sure when they're exposed to the sun they have a warm undertone so that undertone is going to be yellow gold olive bronze going up into oranges and like an orange brown 
so I think that that category is easier um, to, to, to know if you're in that category. Like if you think I've never had sunburn in my whole life, <laughs> that's, that's probably you. And then if you feel like I, I can't pinpoint either one, I don't think I for sure fit in that or that, you know, I've some, I burn and then I, and then the burn goes away and I'm tan, um, but I don't burn all the time. Uh, you know, or some years I don't burn or tan at all, or, you know, it's, it's six of one half dozen of the other. You're, you are neutral. You're like me. Um, neutral is just right there in the middle. And surprisingly that, uh, is a lot of people. And also that is a great, um, shade for you to try when you're really struggling to figure out if you're warm or cool, because a neutral shade will work for anybody. But there are some people that their skin tone is truly neutral. That's me. <laughs> That's why it's so funny when um, like color theory and uh, color, like doing your colors was such a big thing. God, like late 80s, early 90s. Uh, whoever did my colors would come up with totally different. I was a spring. I was an autumn. I was a winter. I don't think I ever was a summer. But it just depended on, you know, I don't know, maybe the light, you know, what time of day, I don't know, but I've been everything and uh, I would just be so confused because every time I'm such a go by the book person, you know, that they would say, you are autumn. I, I would change all my makeup, you know, and get rid of all the berries and the purples and I would just get the real earthy colors. No, you're winter. I would get rid of all the earthy colors. So I'm neutral. I can wear just about anything, which is really nice. Going back to um, the whole issue of, but but what if I can't tell? Like, what if I just don't know? Or what if I always thought I was warm? You know, I tan. I assume I'm warm. I've been wearing a warm shade, but I always feel like I look jaundiced or something. I feel like it's just, it's too much. You can do something called a stripe test. And that's where you find shades that are in that warm category that are close to your skin shade skin intensity level and then maybe also find something close to that intensity level that's cool and neutral and put all three of them on your face so for lighter complected people you might want to put it along your jawline and for darker complected or anyone that has um, just a lot of different pigmentation then it's going to be more up in the cheek area but I, let's see if you can see it even. I did it on my arm here so that we could see it. So the idea is that it starts out pretty thick. And then as it dries and thins out, one of them really disappears into your skin. And that's going to be your undertone, okay? So let's see if you can see what's going on here. So I had a cool and a neutral and a warm. And then as I, you know, kind of spread it out and let it thin out and dry, which one disappears into my skin? Can you tell? It's, it's the, it's this one that you can't see <laughs> neutral. So it, that's fascinating. And that's the best way to know for sure is a stripe test. Uh, usually if you go to a makeup counter or something like that, someone can help you with that. So if you go to Ulta Sephora or to a high-end department store, or if you have a consultant that does this, you know, as a profession, she can do that for you. If you um, are purchasing something like from a drugstore or a big box store, so Revlon, L'Oreal, CoverGirl, that kind of thing, oftentimes they will have names that you have no idea if it's warm or cool, you know, like, um, you know, delicate beige or barely buff or something like that. And you're like, is that warm? Is that cool? Is it dark? Is it light? You know, what does that mean? There's always a 1-800 number on the bottle or the box. And usually if you call that number and say, I need more information about this buffed ivory, is it a cool undertone? somebody down the line can answer that. And if, um, when you get that person, <laughs> 
try to get as much as you can. For example, if you uh, always wear buffed ivory, but you need something darker, get on that 1-800 number and say, okay, I wear buffed ivory, so I need to know what undertone that is. And then I need something with that same undertone that's a couple shades darker. What would it be? 1-800 people can answer a lot more questions than you may think. So I've done that before too. And that's, that's a godsend. But um, people at the counter, they, they thrive to answer those kinds of questions. So, but the, the stripe test, that is, that's a great one. If you can do that. All right. So undertone, that's the big one. And other questions to ask if you're still kind of like, I need more verification. The traditional, do you look better or do you prefer gold or silver? Gold is warm. Silver is cool. Do you uh, look better, more vibrant? Does your face come alive in pure white or like a creamy white? Those kinds of questions. So you can Google how, how can I tell if I'm warm or cool? Neutral is a little bit harder, but um, harder in the sense that there aren't, uh, you don't see as many um, questions like that. Like normally when there are questions, it's cool or warm, cool or warm. Neutral is kind of like, oh, you can't answer that? Then you must be neutral. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, I was so happy when I heard that that was a category. And since I've been wearing it, I'm like, it just makes so much sense because yeah, like in the darker I get, so like in the summer, I wear warmer colors, you know, with my clothing and stuff. And then in the winter, when I'm lighter complected, I look better, in my opinion, in cooler, brighter colors. So it's it's interesting. Anyway, so that's the first question. We want to figure out your undertone. That is going to help you a ton. That is usually the biggest issue. If something looks funny, it's because it's too yellow, too chalky, because it's too pink. Um, that's that's when it gets that plasticky, unnatural look is because it is the wrong, like glaringly wrong <laughs> undertone. <laughs> so we need to figure that out, stat. And then the second one, if you were to put um, all the skin and all the world into three categories, ivory, like the very, very lightest ever, beige, middle of the road, and bronze or ebony, where would you fall? And I know that's a that's a big one because there are there's a lot in between. For me, like I'm like, well, gosh, I guess I would be ivory then because I'm not, you know, I'm not medium when you think of all the skin tones in the world. But then within each of those categories, there's quite a range too. So I am sort of like on that cusp of a dark ivory, very light beige. So be aware of that, that once you figure out if you are ivory, beige, or bronze, ebony, then there's like that whole big spectrum of are you on the very, very lightest edge? Or are you on the very, very darkest edge? So now we're getting somewhere. Because if you can say to someone who knows their stuff, I need a foundation that has a warm undertone in a beige category. I know that I'm light beige, almost ivory. Can you help me out? You've really narrowed it down for her. And... <laughs> I know that when you're looking at the grocery store, I, I'm giving it away. Yeah, I have bought foundation at the grocery store. <laughs> and you're just looking at the little plastic things that just have like a little, you know, little swoosh of the color. And like I said, the names are, are names that don't give you any indication what the actual undertone is. That's That's difficult. I would say... If you are serious about getting a great foundation match, you need to talk to somebody. And I have no problem with getting foundations, you know, like I said, from Maybelline or whatever. But you'll probably have to call like the 1-800 number and get more information on the undertones and stuff. So are you ivory, beige, bronze? Once you figure that out, are you toward the lightest or the darkest? And if you're like, 
I'm not radically light or dark, you know, then you're, you're medium, you're middle of the road. Okay. And then the last one, which if you're not familiar with foundation, again, you're going to need to get some, some back and forth going with whoever is, uh, whoever's selling it to you, <laughs> because you need to talk about the finish that you want. I think also uh, when people say they don't like foundation, it's because they either have had the wrong shade themselves or they've seen somebody else that had the wrong shade and they thought, you know, I don't want to look like that. Or they have had the wrong finish. And so the finish has to do with not only the look of it, but the feel of it. And some things that factor into that are your skin type and any conditions that you have and the look that you want. So for example, if uh, you are, let's say over 50 and you have dry skin and your concerns are fine lines and wrinkles, dry skin, you don't want to accentuate any of the crepiness, you're going to want a foundation that has moisture in it to give you your skin a dewy look to kind of camouflage the fine lines. And you're probably going to need a full coverage, something that's not sheer because you may have age spots happening. You know, what are you going to do? <laughs> if on the other end of the spectrum, you have oily skin, you're blemish prone, you, um, anytime that you put anything on, it seems like it, it causes more blemishes and you don't like the feel of anything on your face that you just really wish that you didn't have to even put anything on your face, then you're going to really want something lightweight, sheer, matte, maybe even oil absorbing. Uh, you could probably get like a mineral powder foundation that's going to absorb oil, take the shine off, but it also gives you some sheer coverage to cover the blemishes so that you can cam camouflage the blemishes. Uh, there's even medicated foundation. Some lines have medicated foundation. If you want something in, you know, in the middle, there is like a semi sheer or a, a medium coverage foundation. There are BB and CC creams are crazy popular for a good reason. They are like a combination of a, a moisturizer and a foundation. And they usually have other factors like uh, sort of like a highlight property to them. They have, they cause your face to really illuminate and glow and they just have a different texture. They have a very satiny texture, but they're very lightweight. So when I'm working with someone who says they don't like foundation, it's really hard for them to find one that matches. They, you know, have had a bad experience. They don't like the heaviness of it. My go-to is to suggest a BB or a CC cream because it's lightweight, it's luminous, it's simple. Typically the BB and CC creams are more, um, I was going to say generic, but I don't know if that's the right word. They're more general. Like instead of having a gajillion different names for every different possible undertone, they might have, you know, several different ivories and several different beige and several different bronze, but they won't maybe not um, specify the undertone. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know. I, I don't get that but I've observed that. So, uh, so for example, if you were choosing a BB or CC cream, instead of asking yourself all three of those questions, you'd probably just be asking yourself the second question, like, am I ivory beige bronze? <laughs> I, like I said, I don't know why I, it's just not quite as sophisticated as choosing a, a real, a traditional foundation. Go figure. Some other things to think about regarding foundation are how you apply it. Because yes, you can apply it with your fingers, but I think ever since COVID, people are more aware of germs and you know things being contaminated and such. I strongly suggest that you try using a makeup sponge or a foundation brush just to see the difference. I like that I I feel like my makeup stays pure. I'm not putting my fingers in the bottle or anything like that. 
but also it gives a really even professional coverage and it makes a huge difference when you are accustomed to that and then you go back to putting it on with just your fingers you you'll be amazed like you'll you can never go back <laughs> so you can find foundation brushes um, there are different kinds some have like a really tight firm head some have more of a spongy head and then there are actual sponges that you can use to sort of blot the foundation on fingers are fine just make sure your hands are clean and then you know, wash them afterward but uh sound like your mom <laughs> And then also with, for foundation, if you have issues with foundation, um, like you need, let's say you have large pores and you want something to kind of smooth that surface to minimize the look of your pores and to help your foundation last, I would say a foundation primer would be a good thing for you. If you have real issues with your foundation lasting all day, I would say uh, like a primer spray after you do your foundation would be a good idea for you they, they both kind of do the same thing you've got your primer that you put on before underneath and then you've got a, a primer spray that you put on after they both extend the wear of your foundation but the primer that you put on underneath also smooths the surface it reduces the appearance of your pores again it sort of gives it that highlighted glow and the spray is more about finishing sealing it keeping it longer i um i personally just like the spray it's you know try them both see which one you like better uh if you have shine on your face or you feel like you just want like another layer of coverage you could try using a setting powder uh, a loose powder, a pressed powder, a mineral powder foundation. I used to layer a liquid foundation and a mineral powder foundation. So you can do two. You always do whatever your liquid products are before your powder products. So if you wanted to do a liquid foundation and a mineral powder foundation, you would do your liquid foundation first. A lot of people will have two different shades, one for winter and one for summer. Even though I do wear sunscreen and I try to keep the sun away from my face, I do get darker in the summertime. So that is not unusual to have two different shades. Or I can get away with having the same shade, but maybe using like a, a pressed powder or a loose powder or a setting powder that's a little darker. So kind of switching up the powder that I finish it with will help. You know, I can either make it darker or lighter using that. So let's review. The first question is, are you warm, cool, or neutral undertone? And the easiest way to figure that out is how do you react in the sun? If you burn or stay the same, you're cool. If you tan or you change shades, you deepen in intensity easily, and you don't ever burn, then you are likely warm. If you don't fit into either of those categories, you're probably neutral. The next one is, are you in the ivory, beige, or bronze category in terms of your overall skin tone? And then finally, what is the finish that you're going for? You need to take into consideration your skin type, the overall look that you want to have when you're done, and the feel that you want it to have on your face. And if you are at a place where you really want to figure this out, the best, wisest thing you can do is talk to a professional. If you are buying something at a big box store, call the 1-800 number. If you're going to a makeup counter or something, don't be shy. Tell them what you need. Tell them what you know. Help them. Let them help you. And you can also see a consultant, which I am one. <laughs> so if you want my um, suggestions, you can feel free to reach out to me because that's that is one of the many things that I do for your beauty needs. So anyway, I hope that you found that enlightening. And if you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the comments. I do personally answer all of the comments and questions that I see on all my different media pages. So I would be happy to do that. So every week I come back with some kind of little 
tidbit for you along with a free resource. So I will see you next week with another interesting topic, either on cosmetics, skincare, self-care. I can hardly wait myself. I will see you then. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great rest of your day.